Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for the Crafts from the Heart mini series. My name is Leah. I am your moderator for today's event. But we have a full fun week of live demonstrations and a bundle of Valentine's Day inspired patterns and recipes just for you. Every day this week, we've got a new instructor. They're going to stream live as we knit, sew, crochet, decorate and bake together. You'll be provided step-by-step -step demonstrations of all of these cute projects, perfect for gifting to your loved ones this Valentine's Day. Make sure to download the free patterns and recipes by clicking the link in the description. Now, for today's event, I'm here to keep an eye on the chat box, and I want to draw your attention to that. It's going to be below your video player on the website, or you can use the chat on Facebook or YouTube, depending on where you're joining us from. And I want you to please leave your comments in that blue chat box. I will be monitoring those comments and questions throughout the entire event. We usually have time to get to quite a few of those. Uh, absolutely drop in both questions about today's project and any more general questions you may have. We usually have time to get to those as well. That is it for me. It is time to bring on today's instructor. Joining us from the studio, we have Emily Steffen. Hello and welcome, Emily. Thank you so much for being with us today. I would love for you to start off by telling us a little bit about yourself and also a brief intro into what we'll be making. Awesome. Hello. I'm so happy to be here. I love these live events because I love the community that we have around them. But um, my name is Emily and I run a studio called Oye Studio and I love to make lots of things. So today I'll be sewing, but I also love to paint and doodle and knit and do a lot of different things. I'm one of those kind of crafters. So I hope you are too. <laughs> but <laughs> the project we're doing today is actually super duper easy. It's a project that I feel like if you just got a sewing machine for the holidays, this is a really easy one that you can start with. Or if you're really intimidated by the curvy lines of these smoochy lip pillows, don't be, because I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on how to sew them well. And it's also a project that you can do with your girlfriends or do with your mom or grandma or kids. It's, it's pretty versatile. And I feel like when you're thinking of something like this, right, like this could be a fun gift or just a fun thing around your house. It's also easily mass producible if you want to bring some to your favorite Galentines or for Valentine's. So keep that in mind as we're making today. <laughs> Oh, I already like that idea. A little <laughs> Galentine's Day uh, event would be yeah. really fun. Um, I'm also going to ask people to let us know where you're viewing from. Say hello. Uh, it doesn't have to be a question to drop into the chat as well. Uh, we love, like Emily said, this sense of community we get from these lives. So feel free to use that chat box the whole time that we are live today, and I will keep an eye on it for Emily. But without further ado, I'm going to send it right to Emily so she can jump into today's demonstration. Awesome, thank you. Okay, so like I said, this project is really beginner friendly, but don't don't be intimidated to say, oh, it's just a beginner project. It's also a really fun project that is pretty versatile. And honestly, as I was putting this together, I was thinking of all the ways you can customize it and make it personal, but the pattern that you have, which is available as a tutorial to download, comes with two different sizes. So we have the smaller one, which is a really good way to bust up some scraps if you feel like you have some scraps of random fabric in your sewing room. This is pretty easy. And this really big one. And this one, you know, it's so funny. I came up with this idea and was like, okay, I need to run to the fabric store because I was like to run to the fabric store. <laughs> and I was like, okay, I need to find some really like good cozy material so that you can make these lips and cozy up on the couch or whatever. And this it's, so I have three different materials today. I have this like, this is just like a plushy fleece, you know, like a normal fleece you would find. This is sweatshirt material. And this is like that really fuzzy kind of Sherpa material. And I thought, this would be the one that I would probably like the least. So I thought this was the one I was gonna like the best. That's why I made it the biggest. And I mean, I like them all, but this one is cozy and amazing. So I highly recommend playing around with the different textures for this because it is pretty easy to sew and it's really fun to kind of say, oh my word, I, I honestly haven't worked with Sherpa material a whole ton until I was playing around with this project and I, I love it. Although, Kudos to all you garment sewers out there who use this fuzzy material all the time because I was cutting it and it was all over. <laughs> so if you have tips and tricks on how to cut fuzzy or sort of like faux fur material, I'd love to hear it. So drop that in the comments because I feel like there has to be tips and tricks to it. So like I said, the pattern is available. Um, it, was, it was shown on the screen and there's two different sizes. So we're gonna make this small size today, but I wanna show you really quickly here. I'm gonna move these out of the way. How, um, so 
So I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory putting the big pattern together, but if you're interested in that, I just wanna briefly show that. Obviously, you're gonna print this out on your home printer, which means the paper is eight and a half by 11. This is way bigger than eight and a half, and eight and a half by 11. So I provided a little guide on the um, pattern here. So there's piece one, two, three, and four, and they're labeled as such. So you, you might be able to kind of see the line of how it comes together, but it basically, basically gets laid out in this one, two, three, four kind of pattern. And the only thing that I really want to point out too is, I mean, it's kind of big and huge and you can kind of see that, is if you look really closely along, um, this is called like the margin or the bleed or the, I don't know, with in printing terms, right? Just the only thing I want to point out to make sure that you get this proportionate is to fold this over so you get rid of that margin. It won't be like the end of the world if these lines don't line up. I'm just afraid you don't want your lips to be like elongated and skinny and less like smoochy and puckery. But maybe you want elongated skinny lips. <laughs> but here's the idea, you just kind of um, tape it together and then you'll end up with one really big piece. But like I said today, we are gonna be doing the smaller piece. And so that is just this one piece of paper. I've already cut it out. It's eight and a half by 11, already cut out. And the cool thing about this pattern that I really like that I do also think is beginner friendly is if you look at, right, this is the finished pillow and this is the pattern. The pattern is wider or um, in this case taller because you want the lips to like smooch out, which means there's a lot of room for error. It's okay, you won't even notice your mistakes. And I like patterns like that. So we're gonna get started. I already um, pre-cut my, my fabric just because it is really easy to cut. All you do, as it says here on the instructions, is cut two along the fold. So fold your fabric in half. This is my folded edge. Lay this on here. I use these things instead of pins. I honestly have no idea what they are. I know they came from my mom. You could also use hockey pucks if you're in the great north like we are. <laughs> hockey pucks work really good just to lay it down there. And then I just cut out two. So I have one, two layers. Um, it can be tricky to cut thick fabric, but cut one and then cut the other if you absolutely need to. So what you'll end up with here is two kind of big wide lips. Now this fleece doesn't have a right or a wrong side. And what that means is like oftentimes if you have printed fabric, there'll be the inside, which is considered the wrong side, and then the right side, which would be considered the outside of the printed side. Fleece, I mean, if you probably really want to get picky, maybe one is a little bit more piley than the other, so maybe we'll just do this. But you will be making sure if you have printed fabric, you will want to line them up so that the right sides or the printing is on the inside. Right, so then that's what we have. Um, oh, my word, I forgot a step. <laughs> I'm getting ahead of myself and just too excited to sew. Before you do that, um, you want to make this line, which is the dotted line on your fabric. So I have a, uh, this is like a washable, erasable pen. You can use chalk. You could use, um, you can use pins. You can use a marker you honestly could maybe just don't make it permanent but I, I actually was thinking a washable marker might work that's similar in the color and all you're going to do what I did at home and maybe you're able to do this is you want to transfer this dotted line onto just one side of the right sides of your fabric which would be the printed side or the pattern side or the side that you want to see out Obviously, I do not have a window to use as a light box here. That's what I usually do at home is, you know, I have my window and then I lay my fabric and then you hold this up and you can see the line underneath. So if you don't have a window or if you're using Sherpa material that's too thick that you can't see through, this is another trick. So I'm going to just transfer. You, you honestly probably could punch holes if you really wanted to, but I'm going to eyeball Make a mark here and a mark there and just kind of eyeball this curve. And like I said before, um, this is a very forgiving pattern. So this line doesn't have to be perfect, but do you see how that's now transferred and you can see it? And then I'm just gonna flip it over 
and transfer the same thing over here because this line is going to be our guide for when we sew the lips shut. And you can, if you're like, I don't wanna do this step, you don't have to do this step, you can totally just eyeball it completely. I found that my, it wasn't even. <laughs> it looked like a sideways smile when I tried to completely eyeball it without having any kind of a line. Okay, there we go. Ta-da! And this, if you do transfer it, now you can see like if I'm super duper picky, okay, this isn't perfectly even from this, but like I said earlier, it's a really forgiving pattern. So I almost forgot that step. Okay, so now, now we're gonna get to sewing. So right sides together. And if you like to pin, pin away. And if you don't like to pin, that is okay. So before you get started, you're gonna choose two sides because we have two lips, a top and a bottom, um, two parts of the sides that you wanna leave open to stuff it. I would recommend choosing this straight part down here. So leave you know two to three inches open here. And then one of these straight pieces, either here or here. The reason is, is that's gonna be the area we stuff and then have to sew shut by hand later. It's super tricky to try and hand sew curves to make them look right. So I would recommend like, you know, that much and that much. Um, don't do the edges <laughs> because you want, the key I feel like to making these lips shapely, if that's a word that we wanna use with lips, is to make sure these are great corners and this right here is very well done. So um, if you're new to sewing, I'm gonna give you some tricks on how to do that with my sewing machine. But Leah, if there's any questions or comments, I would love to hear them as we get started. Well, we don't, we don't have any questions, but we have quite a few little uh, commentary items that I'd love to highlight. So first, we have to say hello to a couple people. We have got Lydiana from New York. We have Carol from Virginia. Uh, Juanette is in Baytown, Texas watching, thinks Ooh. this is really cute. Um, and then Shatika Woods is saying that she crocheted giant lip pillow and has it on her balcony. So she's going to do this and place on my balcony yes. with crocheted roses. Oh. So kind of like a little mishmash of crafting. Love it. Uh, and then finally, Jan, going back to the weights that you use, mm. the pattern weights, Jan suggests tuna cans if you don't have oh. hockey pups or even slivers of soap to mark if you don't yeah. have a marker. So Jan's Ooh. full of good tips here. Jan, I like the soap. You know what? Okay, it's so funny. I feel like the soap idea is something I've heard and every time I hear it, I, it's like brand new information. So I need to keep that in my brain better. That's a great mm -hmm. idea. And tuna, I mean, I don't really like tuna, so that's a great use for tuna. <laughs> Just put the can on top and you're Just good to go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm choosing to start at my one of my lip edges, like one of these lip edges, right? And all I'm gonna do, if you are a backstitcher, backstitch. If you're an anchor stitcher, anchor stitch. I know there's multiple different reasons to do multiple different things, but in my mind, and I think for a beginning sewer, it does not matter, that's okay. Either way, what that does is when you backstitch, it means your stitch goes forward and backward. And when you anchor stitch, it's usually like a circle button on your sewing machine. Um, it goes down, up, down, up, down, up, like, five-ish times and it just anchors your stitch so it's less likely to pull out. So I would recommend at your two edges of your lips to do that just because then it's gonna give it some extra stability. And I feel like no matter what um, seam allowance you decide, and seam allowance is the fancy word for like the edge, how far away from the edge you're sewing, I don't care. It can be a whole inch. It can be a quarter inch. I'm sewing about a quarter inch because I feel like that's just typically what I sew. So I'm gonna go all the way around this first curve. And I'm kind of keeping this, the pointy, you can kind of see I'm getting to this pointy lip. Pointy lip lined up with my finger. And just gradually you can slow down if you need to around this curve, work it. And then when you get here, stop. Your needle will go down, lift up your foot, the needle stays in, and now I can pivot my fabric to make that really good crease where the lip is gonna be. This is one of those like basic sewing things that I feel like sometimes can make or break a pattern, and this is one of those that can make or break a pattern. So, around the second curve I go, and then now, as I'm approaching this next, you know, the side of the lip, I wanna make sure that's lined up, and I'm gonna get to like here-ish, and again, you can either anchor stitch or back stitch. I just happen to like back stitching. 
I'm going to cut my thread. So either pull it out and cut it. I have a fancy button on my machine that cuts it for me. And this is where I'm gonna leave that section open. And you can choose to leave a bigger section if you wanna stuff your whole hand in there. I don't feel like it needs to be that big. Also, I don't wanna hand stitch a whole ton. <laughs> so that's kind of my rule. And then I'll you know pick back up along the edge. So a little bit, back stitch again to make sure that it's nice and sturdy and solid so that you can't rip it apart super easy. Come all the way here, pause. Again, lift up your foot with your needle still down. Put your foot back down and then we're gonna sew the bottom part of the lip. Now, Emily, I'm gonna jump in here because Monica's got a great question about this step. Yeah. So would it be easier to leave one opening at the bottom and two at the sides on the top? And if not, why not? Okay, you totally could do that. You 100% can. Um, maybe it's the laziness of me, but I don't want to hand stitch any more than I have to. <laughs> because I feel like um, the uniformity of, of the sewing machine is better than me hand stitching. So if you want to leave two separate openings, I would imagine she's meaning like these two sides, like the top of the lips. You yes, a hundred percent can. It's just going to mean more hand stitching for you in the long run, which if you love it, go for it. And maybe if you're feeling like, oh, I have little kiddos and I want to give them all these different, um, sort of little tasks to learn how to hand stitch that would be a really good way to add in more you know technique learning during this process i think the more on the sewing machine the better but you can you absolutely can there's nothing wrong with that i should say so i'm getting near the bottom remember that bottom part that i'm going to leave and i'm going to back stitch just a little bit cut my thread go forward do 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 probably like there and then Line this back up. Oopsies, hello. There we go. Back stitch again a little bit to reinforce where that opening is going to be. And then just make my way to finish stitching this. And I'm gonna come all the way back again to this point, which is that, you know, like the edge of the smile. And then again, back stitch just a little bit. And then. Ta-da! So, here is one thing that I always do before I turn my stuff right side out. Well, there's two things. One, I can already see I made him a little tiny mistake, perhaps. Sometimes when you're sewing thicker fabric, which I'm glad we're doing this live because I want you to see this, A, that everybody makes mistakes. So if you make a mistake with sewing, you can just rip it out. Literally, no harm, no foul. But also, thicker fabric sometimes can wiggle a little bit. So if you look really closely, you can see my seam allowance dude, around the edge is pretty even. It's like a quarter inch until you get to right here. <laughs> and I looks like I didn't. Oh, actually, it's okay. So this is the test I'm doing right here. I'm pulling it apart a little bit to make sure that it actually did grab both um, sides of my fabric and it did because I can't pull it apart. So if it did, if it was able to come apart, all I would do is simply go back in with my sewing machine and reinforce that, but it's actually okay. Anytime you are uh, sewing something with curves or most of the time, I should say, you are going to want to allow your fabric some breathing room before you flip it right side out. And what that means is you're either going to edge clip clip notches or clip parts off. Because if you think about it, I'm sewing two pieces together and when I try and flip them out, there's bulk right here, right? Like in the seam allowance. So in order for that to turn smoothly and beautifully so that the, the lip kind of portion, our curves look really well, you have to give it some breathing room. So every time you have a corner that is going out, you're gonna cut it in. A corner that's going in, you're gonna cut it out. So what I mean by that is this corner right here is the edge of my lip and I'm going to clip off this bulk. So now it becomes a little bit of a blunt edge and I'm not trying to turn. It seems like this isn't much fabric, but if you're trying to get a perfect point, this fabric is gonna get in your way and it's gonna make it not a good point. So I'm gonna clip this, being careful not to clip my seam I just sewed. And then this part right here is really important, just a clip, bonk, right here. Because look, now I can move this and it has some breathing room, I guess is another way to put it. And then what I like to do also is along anything that is significantly curvy to clip the seam allowance. And this is where the patience comes in. 
because you want to make these little notches. So I'm making just these little tiny notches, but I'm not clipping the seam I just sewed. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to do this one and not do the other side because I want to see, I want you to see what I mean by this. And if this is, this is, um, it's one of those tricks that I feel like can help when you're doing curves. Okay, so I clipped this side and I did not clip this side and I want to show you why that's important. Hopefully, <laughs> if I can turn this right side out. Here we go. Look at how, wait, which side did I clip? This side's not clipped. Okay, so this side right here. Okay, this is a great example. Look at how this side right now, for the most part, is curvy, right? This side is pretty bumpy. Now I can work my fingers in here and try and get it as cur well, maybe this is not a great example. If you look really closely, it's going doot, 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 doot. It's like straight lines. It looks more like geometric. This is a completely curved and nice piece. So anytime you have curves, you wanna give your fabric breathing room because it's super important to make sure that your edges, excuse me, your, your um, lines or the edges of the fabric is nice and smooth because you won't have the, in this case, your lips won't look as smoochy. So I'm just going to do that really quick. While you're doing that, I'm going to jump in with a couple yeah. more hellos. We've got Lydia in Washington, Ayana from Memphis, Jerry from Southern Illinois. Uh, Tracy says this is a fantastic idea. So Tracy's going to make one of these for her granddaughter. Oh. So thank you for this great idea. Uh, and then Jan coming in with another tip. Uh, clipping is easier for Jan with smaller, very sharp, pointy scissors. Ooh. Do you want to talk a little bit about those as an option? Yeah. Okay. That's actually, so I'm sure this is like physics or something, <laughs> but smaller scissors, they actually do have like trim scissors out there and they're like, honestly, the size of my finger. And it's, it's like, you're able to go doot, 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 doot. It's a lot easier as opposed to these bigger ones. I'm sure it's like, it takes more strength or something to cut the big amount of the scissors. I'm sure it's science that I just don't know the right words for, but that's a great idea. I should have, I have some at home and I just didn't think to bring them. I do love those. Whew, look at this. I also love patterns. I'm, I'm a fan of patterns where you can kind of see them coming together right before your eyes. And this is one of these because it's like positive reinforcement as you're going. So I'm just working out these edges to make sure they're nice and smooth. And you can see those two spots are where I'm going to be stuffing the top and the bottom. So once you have all your edges work and you can, you can use a poking tool like a pencil or a pen or something to kind of get in there and get these edges out. I like to kind of work them and just roll them with my fingers because I feel like that is just as sufficient. Okay, so now we're gonna add this line. So all I'm gonna do, again, if you are a pinner, you can pin your fabric flat just to make sure that it doesn't wiggle as you're sewing it. But all we're gonna do is run a stitch along this line that we transferred, whether you did it with soap or chalk or a marker, or this is that fancy, this thing, erasable blue water or something pen that I have. And all I'm gonna do is sew like this. And again, I'm going to backstitch on these two edges because I don't want the seam to pull apart. So it's pretty quick. Whoa. Here we go. Back stitch. And again, if you're an anchor stitch person, totally go ahead and anchor stitch. One thing I want to point out too, and this is maybe a good example, as I'm sewing, I see a lot of people sometimes, and maybe other people have tips. I see a lot of people often pull fabric from the back when they're sewing. And I learned from a very early, early age that that's a no-no. And the reason is, is because you want the feed dogs or those things underneath your sewing machine that go like this to grab your fabric naturally and pull through as opposed to you pulling. Because what that's gonna do if you pull is some of your stitches are gonna be bigger, some of them are gonna be smaller. And you wanna make sure your stitch length is even and secure. Because if you think about it, if your stitch length is super duper long in some spots and not long in other spots, it's gonna create weaknesses or um, weak spots, if you will, in your sewing. 
So I do my best never to pull from back here. And if it gets stuck or it feels like it's tricky, I like to guide or kind of use the tension of my hands to, to push flat a little bit. I don't know if, that make, if that's making any sense, but try and resist from pulling your fabric behind, I guess is my point in saying that. Okay, back stitch. Ta-da! Another thing that I did think about as I was making this pattern is if you're working with kiddos and, or if you're a beginning sewist and some of this is feeling tricky or overwhelming or you want to take it in stages, one thing that could be really cool is to make this center stitch decorative. So if you want to use a piece of yarn or a piece of maybe embroidery floss and hand stitch, this could be a really cool way to add maybe a pop of color or I don't know, some really fun thing right here and just, you know, just make sure that you're keeping them flat so that they line up really well, but that's an option. I, I guess I should say that's an option. Okay, so one half of my pen here, this is where I think this is fancy, is like this erasable part. So I'm just gonna get rid of any blue lines that I can see, which is not necessary. All right, so now we're into the stuffing part. And you can use whatever favorite stuffing you have. If you wanna use, I just have like this, polyfill from you know the craft store which is upside down <laughs> this is how it is if you i know a lot of people that actually save fabric scraps and fill with fabric scraps like if you had extra scraps of this fabric you could totally fill with that fabric awesome the one tip i will tell you is that it, that every project every project always takes more filling than you think it does <laughs> because you want to make it plush especially with these lips you want them to be very smoochy and three-dimensional so how I like to stuff, how I've always learned, is start small and then work big. So I'm gonna start small, work my ways into the edges on both sides, and just stuff it in here. I can even use my little pen, oops, to just get it all the way into these corners. So there's that, you can see, it's starting to get a little fluffy. And I'm gonna stuff the other little corner over here. I like to use my finger. So I can wiggle my finger in there. And then you're just gonna stuff the bottom and stuff the top with a lot of stuffing. And stuff it plump, like so plump. This is where it always takes more than you think it does. Emily, while you're doing that, uh, Cheryl had a question about your sewing machine. Yeah. Uh, so Cheryl from Massachusetts wants to know what type of sewing machine you are using for this project. So I am a Janome girl through and through. And I'm sure it's just because it's what I learned on. <laughs> I know that there's so many incredible brands out there. Um, the reason I love Janome is multiple reasons because I feel like I know the buttons on most, I've had a few different machines over my life and a lot of the buttons are very similar, right? You, you learn, okay, this is automatic with my hands when I'm doing this or that. This machine in particular is my favorite Janome I've ever had simply because of the feature that I was using before where I can push the button and it cuts the thread and you can pull it out because I hate clipping strings off of everything I'm sewing, which I know it's not the greatest thing for me to admit and say, but that feature alone is amazing. This machine, I sew a ton of thick fabrics like fleece and plush. I sew a ton of felt and this machine is amazing because it's powerful enough to pull, like I was talking about those feed dogs. It's powerful enough to pull um, thick fabric through but it's also super versatile. So I, I love Janome's. I think they're incredible machines. They're workhorses. I don't take care of mine as well as I probably should, and it still works amazing. <laughs> so I can't sing their praises high enough. Um, and they have, I mean, they have a great line of machines, as I'm sure a ton of other companies do, but this has just been my experience that I really like. The bottom is stuffed. Okay, and now, okay, so the bottom is stuffed and now I'm gonna go from this little hole right here and, and um, do the same with the top. Now, the question before was why didn't I leave two openings? You 100% can if you're like, I can't get my hand all the way in here to get the, to the very edge, but just start with that far edge, I think, and you should be able to get it in there. Use a pencil or a um, chopstick or something maybe a popsicle stick even to get it all the way down there if you feel like you can't fit your hand in there. This is almost honestly, that takes the longest part. 
We've got a couple of new comments that just dropped in too. Uh, we've got another uh, grandchildren, set of grandchildren going to be receiving these from Dana in South Carolina. Love it. Uh, Dana said for the new grandkids that were born this last year. So yay for new kids in the family. <laughs> <laughs> I hope they'll just love this. This will be a great uh, little soft plush for them to have mm -hmm. with them as they grow. Uh, and then Shanitra is learning how to sew. So Shanitra is one of our viewers yes. that is going to be making this potentially her first project. Oh, I so love that'll that. Be fun. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love I love hearing of people who decide to tackle on sewing because I feel like sewing is one of those things that you're like, you can do this forever and ever and ever. And it feels so dang intimidating. But I say this about a lot of crafts. If you make a mistake, all you have to do is get your little seam ripper out or get a pair of scissors and undo it. And even if you've ruined the fabric entirely, make the project smaller so you can cut away the area that you made a mistake on. I feel like sometimes we put so much pressure. So I'm so thrilled that you are going to try this as your first project because I hope that you walk away very happy with, with what you made. <laughs> also, okay, I do have to say that my daughter is, so to the two um, grandmas or, or grandpas who are making these for grandkids, my daughter loves the idea of having, like changing it for holidays. She loves plushies, but she loves the idea of changing things out on her bed for the holidays. So part of the reason I made these pillows is we're not really Valentine's decorators too much, just simply because I, I mean, you take down after the holidays and you're like, I don't, I don't even, I mean, we have like little, you know, kid plates or something that we eat a Valentine breakfast on or whatever. Um, and this project is such an easy thing to throw in a tub and take out every single year and decorate your couch or throw it's like not really decorating but it feels like oh my gosh you're in the holiday spirit <laughs> so i mean this is she she has inspired me my daughter um to make these for her bed okay so it's stuffed and all you do for your very last step is i like to hand stitch with quilting thread now you don't have to do that. You can use yarn, you can use embroidery floss, you can use whatever you find in your closet. I like quilting thread because it's, it's thicker and it's more heavy duty. It's thread that if you were to hand stitch a quilt, this is what you'd use. And if you haven't hand stitched before, I'm just gonna give you like a super tiny bit tutorial. The idea of, of hand stitching anything closed is to try and do the same seam allowance of what you sewed with. So in that case, it's about a quarter of an inch because you want to hide this and have it look like it's a part of what you sewed. So I always anchor my stitch just by making a few, I never really do knots because I feel like knots can cause lumps. And maybe that's just because that's what my grandma used to tell me when she would hand quilt. <laughs> and so here, okay, so I'm gonna do a ladder stitch, which means I'm gonna go up, jump over, up, jump over, up, jump over and I'm gonna keep, so so how this was explained to me when I was a little girl is if you think of these as two sides of the street. When you cross the street, you don't ever wanna go diagonally. You wanna go straight across, or at least that's what I was told. <laughs> so I'm gonna pick up a few, you know, I don't know, centimeters, a little bit of the fabric, and then go straight across. So I'm not going, traveling upward. I hope this is making sense. I'm going straight across and then I picked up more fabric, go straight across the street, pick up more fabric, go straight across the street, pick up more fabric, and I'm gonna pull it. And look, at it pulls it closed in what should be mimicking what the seam allowance is that you did with your sewing machine. So the amount of fabric, I don't know if you can see, the amount of fabric I'm picking up or leaving as a space is the same seam allowance that I left on my sewing machine. Now, if this feels intimidating and you just want to go whoop, 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 whoop and make a whip stitch, please do that because that is, this is just a way to hide your stitch. This is not necessary. So cross the street, straight across the street, pick up a little bit of fabric, straight across the street, and watch. When I pull it, it's nice and shut. And actually, <laughs> my son had to get stitches when he was really young and I was watching the the guy in the ER do it and I was like oh my word he's doing the same thing that I know how to do so it kind of looks like stitches maybe I guess 
or I thought they did. I was very, for two seconds, impressed with the knowledge that I have of stitches. Okay. I was honestly thinking that myself. Were you? I was like, this is surgical almost. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was obnoxiously staring at him going, oh my word, I know what you're doing. So look at, if you look at it from, oops, this is upside down, sorry. If you look at it now, it, it looks like this is one, right? Simple, whereas this is still sticking out. So my comment in the very beginning was it's easiest to sew along this kind of straight bottom than it is to try and like do this curve. That's why I left my opening here and on this straight side. So I'm going to just anchor this and I make, to anchor my stitches, I make two X's. So I go this way, this way, this way, this way, and it should be pretty darn anchored without having to do a knot. My grandma was, was um, she hand stitched a ton of things and she would always say, "Notin is rotten. I don't know if that's like a saying, that's what she said. <laughs> that's like a, 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 like a quilter saying. So if it is, yay, if not, that's what she told me. <laughs> so I never do knots. I'm just gonna do the same thing with this opening. And then we're gonna be done. I do right, have I'm to say- i take a moment. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, when I made, after I made this, this first one, I made a handful of these um, for, because Esther wanted some for her bed, my daughter. And then I was like, I need to make some for my sister-in-law for Galentine's. If you want to get together with your girlfriends or some friends or whatever, or even like your teen daughters or whatever, this is a fun thing to mass produce. So if you cut out like five or six and then sew five or six and then stuff five or six, it's a really fun sort of an easy, mindless, Thing, and you can get actually quite a few done in a matter of an hour. So I encourage you to do that. <laughs> We've got a couple good tips here that have dropped in. First of all, hello to Ava. Ava is from Florida. Great gift idea. So thank you very much. Um, Carol is dropping in a little tip. If you use waterproof fabric, you could use oh. it as a bathtub pillow. <gasps> Oh, that's a that's a great idea. And I think, oh. and Carol, maybe you can correct me if I'm wrong, you can waterproof fabric by ironing wax paper. Can't you make your own wax paper? Maybe I'm totally making this up and this is not right, but I think you can make waterproof fabric by ironing on a low setting wax paper onto any fabric, like cotton, then you could make it out of any fabric you already have to still just use something without having to go to the store. Maybe oh, really Google like that. that before you do it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Sounds We've like something I need to try, actually. <laughs> we have another tip. This is going way back to uh, when you were working with the pattern, um, especially the one with the curvy line. So Sue has this idea. Sue says, if you are a perfectionist, you can print two patterns, mm. use one of them as your main pattern, and then cut the other one along the dotted line. That way you could use that as a guide to mark the oh separate lip. That is brilliant. Oh my word, I love that idea. This is why these live events are so cool is because that would have not even crossed my mind and that is such a simple way because like I said, this one, I tried transferring like with the window and holding it up and it just didn't work. And I was like, all right, I'm just gonna eyeball it. But that right there, that is, this is awesome. I love that tip. That's a great idea. Great, and finally, we've got a comment here from Jantel that is looking for something handmade to add to her Valentine's packages. So looks like this is going to be added to the packages, which Cute. is exciting. These are really great. Another thing too that I thought about when I was making these is you could shrink the pattern down by, you know, when you print your pattern, like the printing view, you can make it like, you know, 5% or something. If you want to make little ones for like backpacks or if, I mean, this would be a lot to have to make them for like a classroom or something, but I mean, you can even stuff it with lavender or, you know, put it in your sock drawer or something like this little pattern is, is quite easy to produce in multiple sizes, or maybe you want to make it gargantuan. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, Cheryl just commented, uh, maybe Scotch guard spray would also oh, yeah. help with any kind of waterproofing yeah. that you would need. Perfect. Okay. So in a matter of that 30 minutes or whatever, Da, 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 we have some lips and they're quite plushy and very cute and very soft. So, and they're not perfect because we have a little bit of a crooked smile here, but I don't think anybody's lips are perfect and that's totally okay. <laughs> I think they still turn out really cute. Oh my goodness, I love it a lot. Hold it up, let's see. Ta-da! 
Oh, and here's look the big at that guy. smile. <laughs> <laughs> mini, big and mini. <laughs> Oh, these are great. Well, I have a couple reminders here uh, that I would like to send everybody away with. But first, I want to give everybody that's viewing a chance. If you have any last minute questions for Emily, I'm going to let her have some time for some final thoughts. And I'm going to keep an eye on the chat box and see if any of those last minute questions drop in. So Emily, take it away. Awesome. I feel like every time I jump on these live events and every time I even share anything online or whatever, I love the community of crafting because I hope my hope is, is that even if you never make this pattern or even if you're like, sewing's not my thing, hopefully it just gets you excited to make because I think sometimes we overthink it or we think we have to have a perfect pattern or perfect idea. And I hope that every single time I say, Psh, push that out the window, have at it, even if it's not something you ever share on Instagram or give to a friend or family member for a gift, I just hope that it inspires you to make something and celebrate Valentine's Day in the process in this instance, but do it and have fun with it and just try, <laughs> try something. All right, I like that as a final thought here. We also have one last comment coming in from Jan. A reliable way to make waterproof cotton Ooh. is to buy Pellon Vinyl Fuse and it's available in shiny oh. clear or matte clear. Uh, so she says there's another brand but doesn't remember the name, but it looks like that would be the tip except for the seams the oh seams right sure not be waterproof so submerging in water probably a no-go but just a little pillow to rest your head on while yeah. you're lounging in the bath i think yeah it's good. i love it i yes. love i love it. yeah that makes complete sense with the seams i feel like now i see this is the idea to try everybody's now inspiring me to go oh wow how can i make waterproof fabric because you use waterproof fabric for lunch containers or pillows or anything under the sun that your kid brings outside. <laughs> yes. Oh my goodness. Yes. That's awesome. <laughs> Keep an eye out for a future idea, right? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that brings us to the end of today's demonstration and also to the end of the questions. So it's time to say goodbye. But first, Remember, please join us again tomorrow for another live tutorial. We will be streaming live with Brenda KB Anderson. Now heads up, Tomorrow's stream starts at 11 a.m. Central Time, so a little different than today's. It is Brenda KB Anderson at 11 a.m. Central Time, and Brenda is going to be providing a live tutorial on how to make the Heart of Gold crochet earrings. You can download the materials list and the free pattern right now using the link in the description so you can have that with you before tomorrow's event. You can also go back and re-watch any of these in the future as well if there's anything that you missed and you want to revisit. And you can find the entire mini series schedule in the video description. So on behalf of Emily and our entire team, my name is Leah. Thank you for joining us today. We hope to see you tomorrow. And until then, happy crafting.